All right. So here is something interesting. And, you know, let me start by saying I am 100% in support of what we're doing right now. Uh, I, I stay home. That is my message. That has always been my message. I think these precautions are the right thing to do. Uh, the coronavirus is a very real threat. Um, and I hope, I hope, I hope that um, these precautionary actions, um, which again, it's a bit more than precautionary now, the cases are going up, but you know, we're really trying to go on lockdown uh, to prevent ourselves from getting uh, to a to a more um, extensive level. And, and I hope that is successful, of course. Um, on the same token, uh, are there some situations where you're kind of seeing an overreach by government to kind of step on our civil liberties in a way that is not necessary and not productive, and it's just an overreach for power? Yes, you do see stuff like that occurring. There's no reason the FBI needs to track all of our cell phones right now. There's no reason we need to extend spying powers for the Trump administration. There's no reason, and all those things have happened as of recent, there's, there, there was a bill, HR 6271. There's no reason for that. That's not, that's not helping us battle the coronavirus. That's just an overreach of power. And it's possible for both things to be true. It's possible that yes, it's good that we're doing what we're doing and we need to take the coronavirus extremely seriously. However, it's also possible and also true that you might see some government overreach uh, at, 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 at the throne of power. So keeping that in mind, here's an article from Rolling Stone. DOJ wants to suspend certain constitutional rights during the coronavirus emergency. So the Trump Department of Justice has asked Congress to craft legislation allowing chief judges to indefinitely hold people without trial and suspend other constitutionally protected rights during coronavirus and other emergencies. Uh, while the ask from the Department of Justice will likely not come to fruition, uh, they demonstrate how much this White House has a frightening disregard for rights enumerated in the Constitution. The DOJ has requested Congress allow any chief judge uh, of a district court to pause court proceedings whenever the district court is fully or partially closed by virtue of any natural disaster, civil disobedience, or other emergency situation. This would be applicable to any statutes or rules of procedure otherwise affecting pre-arrest, post-arrest, pre-trial, trial, and post-trial procedures. So basically they can just hold you indefinitely without any due process. And by the way, our prisons are extremely dangerous in regards to the outbreak. There's already been eight outbreaks in our prisons. So not only are they just gonna hold you indefinitely trampling on your constitutional rights, but they're gonna keep you in a place that is very unsafe as far as the containment of this disease. And Here's something that happened in Orlando recently. So in Orlando, this occurred. Orlando police, up oh, there we go. There's the, <laughs> that's so funny. Orlando police arrest a homeless man who violated curfew. So a 34-year-old man who police described as homeless was arrested early Sunday for violating a countywide curfew put, put in place amid the coronavirus pandemic and arrest affidavit shows. Alexander Glover was walking with a bicycle about 4 a.m. He's homeless near Delaney Avenue and Woodland Street, south of downtown Orlando. He was stopped by an Orlando police officer who asked if he was setting to work. The officer, Alex Ham, wrote in the report, Glover told him he was heading to the Linux bus station, but he didn't work until Monday under the countywide curfew, which was enacted on Friday. Anyone who is not a first responder, um, you know, must be inside between 11 p.m. and 5 a.m. He's homeless. Where is his inside? He doesn't have one. He's homeless. So what do you do in this case? Well, in some places now they're arresting them. They're enacting curfews. So if you're homeless and you can't follow this curfew because you're homeless, they throw you in jail. Where again, it's not a it's not a great place to be. Well, for many reasons. Obviously, jail isn't enough place to a good place to be. But is in regards to this pandemic, jail is not a good place to be. Study after study has shown that it's spreading there. It's not always sanitary. And they're just throwing people in jail. Well, here, here's, a, here's a model of a different approach. 
here's something that they're doing over in the UK. Just to, you know, and again, I'm not, I'm not here to say that the UK is perfect. Of course it isn't. They have their own problems. But here's what they're doing. UK hotels to become homeless shelters under coronavirus plan. Up to 45,000 self-contained accommodation spaces needs to be urgently found. Hotels and offices will be converted into emergency safe spaces under a national action plan drawn up by Tony Blair's former homelessness expert to protect rough sleepers from coronavirus. Louis Casey, hired by Boris Johnson last month over the issue of homelessness, was scheduled to start her role after Easter, but deepening disquiet that they're okay. So the strategy to safeguard the homeless will be announced on Monday and follows the lead of California in allowing vacant hotels to be requisitioned into homes for rough sleepers to those vulnerable to the virus. So the bright spot here is that California is doing something similar. So that's cool. That's the state where I live. That's cool that we're uh, we're doing something productive here. Now, UK is doing that on a more uh, mass level. They're doing it more extensively. And it's being led by Boris Johnson, who, by the way, a conservative over there, a far right conservative over there. And even in this, for instance, their approach to homelessness, let's try to help people. Let's try to get them shelter because that's the safest thing, not just for them, but for everybody else. You get people shelter. You allow people to quarantine. That's safer for everybody. Everybody. You throw them in jail. That's more dangerous for everyone because now another human being has become more vulnerable. What happens when you just let them go? And maybe they have coronavirus now. So not only is this brutal and cruel, so on a moral level, it's absolutely disgusting. That, that goes without saying. You're going to take people who don't have a home during this pandemic. They're struggling especially hard. You're just going to penalize them, treat them like criminals, and throw them in jail. Not only is it morally repulsive, which I think doesn't even need to be mentioned. It just goes without saying. But it's also more dangerous for society at large. It's more dangerous for all of us. Whereas in the UK, they're, they're trying to house people in hotels. They're trying to actually do something constructive to help not only the homeless, but everybody else too. Everybody. Um, so it's very interesting when you see how... Um, when you see kind of a more communal nurturing approach versus an approach that, and I know I use this term a lot and I probably say it too much, but I, I it's an, it's a great term and it's very appropriate. Uh, an approach that is straight up Orwellian because that's what this is. Arresting homeless people, trying to suspend constitutional rights in the name of a pandemic. That's authoritarian. That's an overreach. That's, only to be used to hurt people, not help society, not help battle the coronavirus, but to help those in power keep their thumb on the uh, thumb on those without it. This is just something to benefit the haves over militarization. And, you know, whenever something like this happens, and it's a shame that this is the world we live in, but it is, that's the reality. Whenever something like this happens, there's a little bit of a test involved. Let's see what people are willing to say okay to. And it's really sad that in the United States, that's what the powers that be do. But that's the reality. And the coronavirus will be no different. It is no different. Um, and that's the line we all have to walk. The line we have to walk is saying yes we need to stay home. We need to take this seriously. We need to listen to the information. We need to listen to the CDC. That's all very important. But we also need to sniff out overreaches when it happens. We also need to realize that, you know, the FBI doesn't need to know where we are at every single second. That, you know, uh, trampling on people's constitutional rights isn't going to help us battle coronavirus. Throwing homeless people in jail where there's more likely to be a spread of corona, isn't necessarily going to help. Not only is it brutal treatment of the person, but it also hurts everyone else too. So, I know it's a crazy notion, 
But what I'm saying is I, I don't think the oligarchs have our best interests in mind. <laughs> Call me crazy. And maybe we should uh, maybe we should take a few notes from our brethren across the pond, which, by the way, incidentally, took a couple notes from us, took a couple notes from California. Maybe everyone else should take some notes from California and the UK, and we should do this on a mass level. Call me a dreamer. Get your news on with Rhonda. Do you want to know what's going on? We're getting our news on today. Get your news on with Rhonda. Do you want to know what's going on? We're getting our news on today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can tweet me an article at Ron Placone. We'll go through it together and 